Hello, I'm currently trying to get something to uh, cooperate here. Um, let me see. Because this kind of disappeared for some odd reason. doing today? I don't know if there's anyone in the chat yet. Um,
width needs to be um, no. Um, sure, that'll be, that'll work for now. Hello? Um. There we go. Now the chat is appearing. Oop. So I've got here, um, I've done a lot of work to this. Um, while we were out. Um, what? Okay, it is Thursday. Basically, everything that we were writing here at the end, I've shoved in here. Um, and I just thought right now that probably slowing down here would make sense. You can also see I haven't finished writing this section yet. something like Thirty second notes. I really can't hear that very well. Um. 
Uh, maybe if I put it in synth for a little bit, and then I'll be able to hear it. That's slightly satisfying. Um, it is a huge tempo shift. Um, I might need two more bars of this slowdown so it sounds more natural. might also just sound weird because I'm so used to hearing it the other way. Um, um, and in case I decide I hate this, I did save a new version of the file, so I can always go back. and probably should rehearse my fantasy marching band. Let's see, I need GE. I could repeat this so but da da ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum 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 I do something like that keep like this original rhythm here Decisions, decisions, decisions. Um, you're the first one in the chat, Marching King. Welcome.
It died off, sadly. Um, well, it can't die off if no one had entered it yet. <laughs> Bum, bum. Okay, right now this is all in second inversion. That's not going to work. be first inversion. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, right. Uh, gotta change these measures. <laughs> the D flat. I was like, what is causing that? There we go. Five, seven, over three. Oh, four, seven, over three. Um, let me see. So right now it is, um, we are kind of in D flat major a little bit. Um, go, well, we're kind of, we're going a lot to G flat major, however, there's a bunch of C naturals, rather than, um, C flat. So, um, we're going G flat major to an A flat major chord. So that's kind of the flat seven of that. And then we have the A flat major chord going to the G flat chord again. Yes, I am using the um, section sounds, which became available in 2014, I think, in Finale 2014. Um, and then they added the tenor sax sound band section sound, I think in um, 20, or in 25, in Finale 25. Um, and then you have to kind of use the sousaphone section sound for um, tuba. Um, sometimes I'll use the band euphonium sound rather than the baritone horn sound. Um, it's sound, I like the sound of the euphonium one, uh, but I think it might be softer. Sometimes. I don't know. One of the two are softer. Let's see what the other one sounds like. Although you're going to more likely have a baritone section than a euphonium section. So I guess the euphonium sounds kind of, I don't call it nasalier, but um, brighter. Um. 
Yeah, a lot of the times if I'm writing um, for an actual group, um, I will write low brass one, low brass two, and use the bar the uh, baritone sound. Um, yeah. In general, euphonium is definitely more of a darker sound, and I like the sound of euphonium better than baritone, but um, with the basic garretone sound, it sounds like the baritone horn section has more of like a doll sound compared to the euphonium one. Um, this whole arrangement, like, or this whole show, it's not an arrangement, it's original. Um, I'm using kind of a more extended instrumentation, and so I'm kind of expecting there to be enough for two trombone and a baritone parts. Um, but often I will write low brass one, low brass two. <laughs> um are you using finale uh which version Twenty-six, so that's what I am using here. Um, well, I just realized that I never fixed this. Uh, the, I mean, the integration of the contact player isn't too bad. Um, have you been able to at least get it to show up in Finale? So, like, whenever you go to um, the VST banks, like, Contact Player 5 is in here. Oh, you're using Contact 6. I actually use Contact 5. Um, so, let's see. Device setup. Manage VST directories. So you've gone in and added a directory for where it's probably it's usually in native instruments um, for the VSTs um, the library can ah gotcha um, have you tried using contact five instead of six? His mind runs on five. Although I don't know a whole lot about whether or not six is supported or not. Oh, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure Contact 5 came with my virtual drumline install. If I remember correctly. start slowing down until here.
Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, well, good luck. Thank you. Oh. Uh, yeah, I luckily I haven't had too many issues with tap space. Um, it, I think it took me a couple tries to get the VST to show up. But once I got it to show up, it was fine. Okay. Now I have to write percussion parts. Oh, yeah, the template. I don't actually use the template um, because I don't feel like spending money on something that I can just do myself for pretty easily. <laughs> um, so. Um, this should be xylophone. Just change instruments, xylo. Um, all right, I was like, is this a grand pause? I forgot what I wrote and I just wrote it a couple days ago. Um, um, so it is about the Fountain of Youth. Um, show title is Search for Youth. I, yeah. Um, and it is all original music. Do I use G flat anywhere? No, I use A flat, B flat, and E flat here. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to ask them to transpose the drum. But which one? Oh, the high F maybe? C, A flat. Oh no, I do have a high G flat there. Do I tell them to change? I don't, okay, sweet. I always write my shows in one large document, which is great for when I need to go back and reference other parts of the show, but man, does it take forever to get back to where I was, unless I know the measure number, and I never do.
分。Hmm. I don't think I really want to do that, do I? Let's just go ahead and not play the rest of the G-flats for that measure. And then we'll go ahead and rest the first beat here. And I'm definitely know my letters. Okay, I might be able to actually copy paste most of this, which would be really awesome. Just kidding. Done. B A G flat B flat and then I think I can copy paste this Thank you. And rest, rest, B, not caps lock, A. I'm doing terrible at selecting the correct letters today. Oh, cool. I am an oboist, <laughs> as my primary, um, but I'm a woodwind doubler. I am pretty decent with baritone, um, but I'm terrible at the trombone, and I've never really got to play um, like some of the other low brass things um, too much. Um, we're going to put this forte here. I gotta figure out what the mallet parts are gonna be. Um, I will be working with a school this fall. I've worked with schools in the past. Um, this past year I haven't, I didn't work with anyone. Um, but. I have worked with four different programs over the last 10 years. Um, some of them are independent, some of them were um, schools. I don't know why I stopped. <laughs> My microphone definitely can go above that.
Nope. I type everything. I type everything in um, using my computer keyboard. So like when I need a letter A, I type the letter A. Um, and then I use the number pad to change uh, the note length. Uh, it depends. So I have been using Finale for about 15, six, close to 16 years now. Um, and so I, and I've always used, um, well, I started out using like literally clicking in every note. And then once I discovered keyboard shortcuts, I've been using them for ever since. Um, so, uh, but to a lot of people, they find that being able to actually play what they're doing helps. And that probably helps in a lot of, a lot of people with the writing process. Um, uh, my brain doesn't, my brain works that way, but not in a, as fast of a way that I can just type it in and hear it. I guess, because I play a lot with the rhythm of what I'm doing, and I don't know. I bet I could use one, and it would work. It would work pretty well. Just go ahead and use the other one. Um, in cases uh, of this, it might be helpful <laughs> um, because then you're playing the mini note. Um, so I haven't found a really good effective way to write some of the virtual drumline sounds quickly or any of the I guess it's true of any of the regular Garretton sounds too um Yeah, I I definitely use um, I definitely don't use that when doing um, pitched instruments, but and just like a pitched instrument, you can still type like letters, and you'll get close. Um, Uh, that's usually helpful when I'm writing tenor line stuff because like I can press E and it'll take me to the fourth space and stuff um, Um, let's see. Uh, jump. Oh, yes, that's, wait, that's splash symbol. I don't want that one. Spend it symbols, spend it symbols with mallet crash. With 
fat choke with mouth. Okay. Oh, short choke with mallet. That probably would be more effective. Ja. Da da da. Um, um. I feel like I probably should change that with a mallet to reflect that X notation as well, because that could get confusing with it randomly switching. Roll, roll, X, X, X. There we go. Give the direction for what to do. Suspend it simple with mallet. LD. LV. I am not a big fan of that. So maybe have them Do that. Play on the last two counts. Um dot dot dot. Like in the in the bar seventy eight. Actually, going to put a um, roll with a crash. Well, that roll was like a thousand years late. Um, that one's supposed to be short, but um, uh, wasn't short enough. Also, did I? Oh, okay. I didn't change those to chokes, and that's why. Okay, suspended sounds generally are pretty soft, so I'm gonna put um, this here and then hide it. Uh, actually, put it there, hide it, and then put that.
And then I also have created a um, roll graphic there that won't actually affect um, the sound. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just plop that there. Probably do the same thing. Actually, this will go here. three instead of uh, count one. Oh, but da 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 um, bum tsh. Um. Oh, I think I I think I get what you're saying though. Um, because the melody comes in on beat three. Kind of sounds weird out of context. I'll put it in context and that might help. Um, I think there has to be something on beat one. I think it has to be beat one just because of where like that's just the low brass coming in and everything and it that's the impact um, it might make more sense once all the other percussion instruments are in um, like there's no drumline parts in right now um, hello Cody uh, the whole ending I shoved in the middle <laughs> so now this goes into this. Um, off camera, I wrote a lot of stuff here. And that transitions now into what used to be there. Oh, the, yeah, the low brass melody. Yeah, I hadn't given them like anything 
Yeah, it sounds weird a little bit just because we've been playing what it was before a lot, but I think thematically this works a lot better. And to someone that hasn't heard the show up before, the transition probably sounds, probably works a little better. than to someone that's been listening the whole time. Um. So there's a lot to st of stuff to do down there. If you go to the beginning of the stream, you can actually listen to uh, the whole thing so far with this shoved kind of in there. instrument. I don't remember which one I chose. Okay, accessories. China ribbon. Uh, not that B. Uh, that B. Bum, bum, bum. China triangle, hi hat, sizzle symbol, crash symbol, suspended symbol roll. Um, you're going to leave yours a little early because you're going to play on beat two. A flat. Actually, before I go and write a lot of these aux parts, I probably should go down here and write the drum line. Which I'm not excited <laughs> to do. Um, not necessarily. Um, for example, um, like this stuff all over here is not at all the wind parts. It's kind of its own thing. This is kind of based off of where I have the accents and the wind parts. Um, a lot of this stuff, I mean, that is the same one run in the woodwinds. This is based off of the trumpet part, but then I've added in stuff in between and kind of uh, expanded on it. 
Um, and all of this stuff is only in the pit. There's no, um, none of the winds have these. But I will generally, hello. I'll generally look up into the winds for ideas. Um, if I don't have anything that's catching my ear, um, then I'll just kind of start with that as a bare bone and then sometimes I'll expand upon it here. Okay, um, I need to go to here for drumline parts. I wonder if accenting, if I change this to be just all, I wonder if this would help the transition. Kind of comes out of nowhere though, and it's kind of out of, really out of style. <laughs> But it definitely helps with the transition. Nope. I'll just keep that as not accented. Can't have the bass drums playing unison rims because the finale VDL won't import it. Oh, because you don't have, um, because your VST is messed up. Yeah, no, that didn't necessarily help. <laughs> Ooh, but maybe. Oh, I think I did it backwards from what I wanted to do. And I don't need to listen to that many measures. Is most of your battery music easier written, or do you have some people? Um, so this part specifically is supposed to be in the style of um, like a military fife and drum part. Um, um, I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, so that's why it's written the way it is here. Uh, 
Um, I would say this is probably this section right here is probably more what I would what I'm writing in this piece at least for difficulty. This section is just not as um, intense. But I also don't know exactly how difficult uh, difficult is. <laughs> um, and so I have a general idea from working with indoor drum lines. But my experience working with indoor drum line was with a group that was um, in a pretty low class. Um, competitively. This really likes to uh, glitch out, doesn't it? Let's see. Um, so I think this, though, this transition will work better. The the Ike Jackson, I have not. Yeah, I'm very, I'm definitely aware of that group. <laughs> um, and they are very, very talented. <laughs> how often in drumline music you see 2T written. <laughs> um, I'm going to put 2T and then hide it in the bass drum part because Finale does uh, change volume sounds whenever you give it the signal, uh, the, the expression of solo. Um, because it'll bump the sound like a certain number. I've seen it once. Um, 
Dann. Um, no. I said A. There we go. That was weird. Okay, normally the bass drum is really cooperative with me. Um, but today it is not. Here we go. Boom, ba da dum, ba da bum, ba da ba da ba dum. And then we're gonna go. <laughs> Conduct. Oh, the conductor's Zoom call. Um. Uh, do I want to rate that? What is happening elsewhere? Oh, it's doing the, um, I should probably do that, actually. One, two, three, four, and, and, and three, four. Now that I'm remembering that exists. And then I can build on top of it. Uh, oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, and, and, and three, four. Okay, you'll let me put another note in here. That'd be great. There we go. And I'm just gonna go like that and copy paste so then I don't have to deal with what I just dealt with. <laughs> I used Sibelius once in college in a music tech course. That's it. That's the end of that story. <laughs> Go ahead, um, solo this instrument. Timpani and drumline. It is super popular um, with uh, percussion rangers. I imagine it's has to do with um, how you enter in virtual drone line, um, but I just I just didn't like it. <laughs> And we're going to repeat that to groove. Hello again, Marching King.
right, right, left, right, left, right, 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 left, right, right, left, right, dun, 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 I said F. Thank you. Or at least I wanted to say F. Tool. I always write uh, my tenor parts this, with the stickings. Um, as as I'm writing it, so I'm thinking about that process. Because if I don't, um, and I go back to it and start writing after it, I'll completely forget what the uh, sticking I wanted originally was. Um, Right, right, left, right, 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 left, right, 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 bum, 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 And then I can also try to avoid doing something dumb, because I'm really good at doing that when it comes to drumline. Um, so I was the staff arranger, um, for high school for a few years. Um, and then I wrote for an independent wins group where I was also on staff last year in 2019. Uh, we're going to go mezzo forte for this. The wins group that I wrote for, um, I wrote for the first season of Armada Wins and the Pacific Northwest. Uh, 
Um, nice. Uh, yes, I enjoy Box 6 uh, shows quite a bit. Um, especially their indoor shows. Or their indoor percussion shows are just... Do they? Bum, 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 bum. Um, are you talking about box six, Marching King? Or are you talking about the group that I taught. Cool. I actually have not heard those ones. That should maybe make it so it's not a crazy change. <laughs> well, Box 6 is a company. Yeah, the shows they write are pr pretty high quality. And so that's not surprising that a group that can pull them off would do well. Um, good question. I'm still working on it, um, and I moved, so um, a lot of it has to do with cr creating um, connections with local directors, um, and so I was working towards um, getting my stuff played, um, and as a music ed student, a lot of the times, um, if you can work with the marching band director at university sometimes they get asked um about instructors and they can also put your name out there for just arranging in general um the other thing is just start trying to contact people i guess um for me i moved for grad school and so i've been kind of rebuilding that and i'm trying to and it's, it's tough getting into a market that already is got like their arrangers they use. Um, but a lot of the times you can kind of try to sell yourself because you're local. That can help. Um, one of the nice things about arranging for groups that you live near is that you can easily go into a rehearsal and if they need rewrites for something, you can tell what needs rewritten and how it needs rewritten. Um, It's, I definitely am nowhere near the point where I want to be yet. Um, that's one of the reasons why I do a lot of the stuff on media platforms. Um, and I've started getting comments on shows from directors in the area. Um, getting feedback is also a pretty important step too. Um, for, um, the, I guess, and also taking advantage of any other communities you might be part of, um, especially as a college student. Um, you are making connections with future educators right now. Um, so make sure that 
you're putting yourself out there even for those people who are not yet directors but will become directors. Um, if you don't have a website yet either, uh, definitely work on getting one of those just for portfolio purposes, if anything. How do you add a picture to your score, like your artwork? Um, are you talking about like on the cover, like making a cover for your score? Or using um, pictures within the score? So um, Finale has this pay, page layout button. And you can insert a blank page before the beginning. Um, and that blank page would be a cover page. Um, then if you go to the, so I've used the expression tool for this before, um, where you create, um, a new expression and you can actually then um, I'm just gonna hit create go into uh, what is it um, yeah this tool so then if you click this tool you can click and you can actually import um, graphic files and even PDF files. Um, so like, I don't know, I'll just do this Pearl Harbor picture. And then you can move it around and resize it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I actually use that picture tool um, when writing materials for beginning band um, so I can import fingering charts and put them in um, for specific notes. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different ways to do stuff. Place graphic, check graphics. Now that, I don't know. You may want to, if you're going to do it as a cover, when you export your score as a PDF, you could have a separate page that's your image as a PDF and then combine them. I, so I started um, by orchestrating things for marching bands. So not necessarily arranging them, but just orchestrating them into a marching band um, instrumentation. And that kind of helped um, to get started with how do I write for each instrument? 
And then I started working into arranging things that I liked and knew really well. Um, and then I have these original things that I had been working on. Um, my first, my first original show is not anything to write home about. Um, I wonder where, I don't even know where it'd be. Old computer files, maybe. This is some old stuff right here, like. Oh gosh. Um dun -ba -dun -bum. I think this is the first original show I ever wrote. And it was in a f I don't know what four movements. Um, I don't even know if this is going to work because I made this in finale 2003. <laughs> it depends. Yeah. Um, ooh, audio setup. Um, a lot of the times I work in, I work in, a uh, one file. And so a lot of times it is not necessarily divided into three movements. It might be divided into five or six. Um, but a lot of times when I've been writing for groups, that's kind of been the, there might be an introduction and then a first, second, and third movement. Oof. Oh yeah, apparently I really liked the tuba in 2008. I would have been a sophomore in high school when I did this. I'm 
Now I'm kind of curious what the other movements are like. Uh, that was movement one. Movement two. Yeah. Sure. Um. I think I just had learned about the harmonic minor scale. I didn't know how to make key changes very well. I still don't know a great way to do it sometimes that I like. I'll know ways to do it, I just don't like them. <laughs> yeah. Four part split. I'm afraid as these go on. Uh, smart playback, too. I'm guessing it's this one. <laughs> I remember this. The MIDI sounds. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that I can instill confidence in you, Jay.
Well, this is... This was written in 2000... In Finale 2003, rather than... T but, like, in 2008, I think the MIDI sounds are pretty close to what you're hearing. Um, there's a... Okay, the Finale. I don't know why I'm doing to the, this to myself. Oof. Oh, good. That's kind of the point. Plus, it's nice to be able to write and get feedback at the same time. Um, but... Drum set, drum line, yeah. That's the end. Um, so yeah, that was the first original music show I ever wrote. Uh, at a point, I think I realized the drumline parts were trash, and so I started making files without them. Um, oh man, there's so much stuff in here. I'm not gonna play it, but um, this show, the GOHL, um, was the first the first arranged show that I ever wrote. Um, and it was based off of music from uh, a RPG Maker game that was being made on a forum that I was on. Um, so now we have to get uh, the sounds to come back here. And I am definitely not an expert. <laughs> but thank you all. loaded the sounds now. Um, there we go. Oh man, that felt really weird after listening to everything else that I just listened to. <laughs> it was almost refreshing. Oh man. Gotta start somewhere. And that was... I think I'd been writing music for three years at that point. And I had just started learning music theory stuff. Specifically, this is very delightful to listen to. Oh, wow. Um, well, the question is, do I honestly just, like, loop this? Do I want to be lazy? Hmm. It's not really that nice to loop. Well, that's cool. I've met a few arrangers at this point. Um, I was really lucky that when I was in college, the two people that arranged shows um, was a student, actually, at my university, and um, the marching band director who I took composition lessons with. Um, he th refused to do anything marching band related in my lessons, but um, getting to work with him 
um, just regularly with composition really kind of showed me um, different methods. Um, and it was nice too, because he never did, uh, he never tried to make my music sound like his, um, which I think is super important when you're studying composition with someone. Um, I mean, unless that's really your goal is to get your music to sound like theirs, but I think there's better ways to um, encourage your own creativity um, and explore different sounds. That isn't to say that his ideas um, weren't things that he would do um, and that it didn't influence my music, um, but I definitely have my um, chord patterns and rhythmic structures and orchestrations and colors and timbres that I enjoy. And so if you're listening to my music, like you hear them come up frequently. Um, and um, unlike my teacher, I am a person that has to listen to something and listen to it again and listen to it again. And then maybe I have an idea of what comes next, <laughs> which was my teacher's teacher that did that actually. I think I might take this and copy it, but alter it slightly. And then use that for our loop in this section. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, Um, I keep pressing Z for the shortcut. <laughs> it's not how that works. Uh. I really wish the buzz roll had a shortcut key. Like, can I? I really wish that I could set that. If there's a way to set that, and I have not figured that out in 10 years, um, I'm gonna be really sad. <laughs> Ooh, I hit control. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, right. I actually have to make it a buzz roll. I'm smart. Um, also, didn't I put that on both of these? What happened to the other one? That was weird. Maybe I'm just dumb and didn't notice that I didn't do what I wanted to do. That's likely. Ooh, I like that. I don't know how easy that is, but I liked it. Um, shoot, that made me lose my train of thought. Thank you. Yeah. My um, woodwind doubler oboe primary, um, and uh, when I did play percussion stuff, I played bass drum and cymbals. Uh, has no real good knowledge of what's hard or what's well. I have an, I have a like if I can play it, then I know it's too easy for certain people. Um, but if it's something that like maybe. I could practice, then maybe that's probably a good easy difficulty level. 
Um, <laughs> and then if it's something that is just out of my reach. They could keep the triplet 16th note skeleton during the buzzes. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, um, I want 16ths here. Uh, maybe I only want an eighth. Yeah, I only want an eighth. Maybe a check pattern kind of thing. Bum, 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 bum. And I need an accent on the and, the and, and one. I'm going to go ahead and put accents on those two. And I almost forgot to do that. And now for the loop. Ooh, that's like sludge. There we go. Bum, 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 bum. What if I do the check pattern here too? Oh, too many. I knew as soon as I did it that I did too many. First. Um, oh. Maybe I need to start it on beat two. Ooh. I don't want to do this. Uh, maybe put that there. And put that one there. Put that one there and that one there. That should work. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> We're just gonna go straight sixteenths. Um, and hmm. Maybe just straight sixteenths. Can always go back and make it harder. I'd rather it be too easy to start and then make it difficult than it be too difficult to start because it's always harder to reduce it back because it doesn't have the same sound. And then we cheat a little bit, because I'm not above that. <laughs> um, I will need to change something over here, though. I'm just not sure what.
probably the last measure. Um, actually, what if I did this here? And then the last measure is what I change. Um, because Finale has the nice glitch where um, you can't put in things here. I'm going to put six notes here. I said six notes here. And then we're going to go to the tuplet tool. Six in the space of four. And delete. Um, and, 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 bum, bum, bum. I don't like what I just heard at the end of that measure, but also... Now I might be able to hear it. <laughs> um, no, not going to do that. So that's one part. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start making some more coffee. Um, I'll be back in about five minutes. Um, in the meantime, well, is it five minutes or is it? How long is this show? I'm going to play the show and um, try to be back by the time the show's done.
Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> I've got my coffee brewing. I don't know why I'm drinking coffee right now, but I am. I'm just gonna say, yep. Ooh. Now I just gotta find a letter that doesn't have anything already. Really? Uh, what about... Yeah, that's the one I want to use. Oh, okay. Now I see how it works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change that to X. Shift X. Thank you so much. That probably just saved me a lot of time because of how often I put them in. Ugh. Beautiful. Yeah, there's some things that I just never learned how to do in Finale because I've been doing it so long that I just don't think <laughs> to do it. And then there's things that might be new in Finale 25 and 26 that I just haven't experimented with. And sometimes I'm just too lazy to look it up. <laughs> kind of take this and we're gonna just alter it just like we did the other line <laughs> I don't know how much longer because um, right now it's only been about two hours um, but I might do other things um, <laughs> considering uh, last week there was a couple four almost four hour streams right there might have been one that was almost four and a half and there was a couple days last week I streamed for a total of eight hours or so Nope, I wanted down here, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, uh, nope. This show I am. Not always. I think because I'm writing for a group, I'm writing it in the idea that the group would be a larger one, that they would have the people for six. 
Um, but a lot of the time, I am also imagining that the six, base six part would get played by base five if there wasn't one. And with the transpose function, I could change all of six's notes to base five. And I wouldn't be mad about it. Although this part, I think, would be better off just transposing it up one bass drum. Which I might do anyway with this part. Copy-paste this. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, I just realized what I probably should be doing for this rhythm up top. That'll make that easier. Bottom, bottom, bottom. It's live on. It's live on here. It is lively. Yeah. Um. I think we've had. About half regulars, half um, not regulars today, actually. And some of our regulars are not here. I use Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y. I'm in the wrong tool, that's why. I was like, why isn't this adding accents? Well, there's not a whole lot to be moderated right now. He is there, lurking in the shadows.
Oh, quick time to make sure my fantasy marching band, or for my fantasy color guard, I guess, not my fantasy marching band. Um, let's see. Uh, how much energy do they have? Oh, yeah, 200. Um, and it all needs to go here. Uh, movement. What time is... Yeah, right? Hey, Marching King, do you know what time, uh, Eastern Standard Time, the final, the uh, prelim scores go up? I don't remember. Because I've played it in three different time zones <laughs> at this point. So that would have been an, an hour and a half ago, right? Oh, is it the break day, to the day today? It's the break day today, isn't it? Oh, did it get a day? It must have got a day off at some point, right? Because didn't the break day used to be um, a.m. or p.m.? P.m. Uh, the break day used to be Wednesday. I kind of like the break day. It gives like that sense of who, oh, what's going to happen? <clears throat> boom, boom. Not a roll, not a crush, not a click, not in. Unison hit. Bum bum. Bum. Oh, that. Bum 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 bum. Take it to dumb. Triple lit. Um, are you saying like using a grace note as a flam? Like that? Oh, yeah. There should be a grace note tool. Um, tools, I'm trying to remember which one it is. Yeah, it's in tools, simple entry, grace note for me. 
Um, <clears throat> Come on, chair. Disadvantages of a chair that rolls. There we go. I always save the toner line for last because it's the one I know the least about. And I accidentally left bass drum soloed. You mean like this French press? I love my French press. It was like $15. I think you can get them for even less. Um, actually not a big fan of the triplet and the bass drums. I think I'm going to give them eighth notes. Accidentally changed a solely to say mezzo forte. Let's see what that volume balance sounds like. And you can see where I copy-pasted and didn't delete the uh, dynamic markings. Ooh, I'm glad I went down here. get to that part. Just going to do a quick save. And too far. And zoom back in. <clears throat>
There we go. Um, get those to match that. right, left, right. Eventually I'll go back through and change the style for this to be so that the stems are facing upwards. But sometimes Finale and Styles don't like each other. As we saw in uh, the last stream when I tried to do that whole like 12-8 in one section and 4-4 four, four and the rest of the ensemble and it was just a hot mess. Uh, the stems for the notes. I haven't made that stuff style in here yet, have I? So it would look like that. And it moves it out of the way for the stickings. Oh, yeah. Oh, I hit A instead of C. That was when Joe... Yeah.
now for this beautiful moment of repeat. Right, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right. I deleted that, but maybe I didn't. Oh, I deleted the sticking instead. Gotcha. Um, right. Ooh, that's not. Ooh, ooh. I didn't mean to do that. Um, so that would be right. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right. If I originally made a specific tempo marking on a document, is there a way to remove it and change it? Um, if you go to the expression tool and double click and go to the tempo marks category, you should be able to change any of the dynamic, any of the tempos you've created and it'll automatically change the ones you've made in the score. Um, the tempo that's right here is the one that goes by default unless you have a different tempo marking at the beginning. And it'll take the one that you've put there rather than this one. At least that's how it usually works. Yeah, you should be able to edit either the way I just said, or um, if you right click it and edit definition, that will change the like actual properties of the tempo marking. Um, the other thing is tempo markings will only change the tempo if you go to the playback part and either have match playback to metronome marking text or um, uncheck that and have tempo equal quarter note set to the value of the tempo you want.
Right, left, left, right. Uh, right, left. Right, left, left, right. Right, left, um, right, left, right, left. Oh, right, left, right, left. I can do that. Oh, I should write this. Um. Wow, that, that was weird timing. Perfect. <clears throat> All right, now I just need to figure out what I'm gonna do in this section. 
There's something up here that is weird. Yeah, no, and two sounds like a good idea. Oh, it's the vibe. <laughs> That's what's sounding weird. That fixed that. Kind of seeing with this rhythm feels like underneath what I've got. Excellent. I just don't. Ugh, I accidentally hit my touchpad.
this is obviously not the rhythm I'm going to use, but I'm trying to see what the base of the rhythm could be. All right, well, I'm, ooh, hit my mic. I'm gonna go ahead and, I think I'm gonna end here for now and let my brain kind of think about this for a little while. Um, I will be streaming again on Saturday and I'm actually gonna stream in the afternoon on Saturday, um, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then I will be doing Twitch after that for the game that I've been making. So um, if you want to uh, come check out the stream again on Saturday, I'm currently scheduling it right now. Um, and it should appear in your sub box at some point here. But I'm going to go ahead and play through the whole thing and I guess we'll uh, take a look at the percussion part today. So, uh, until next time, I will be on Twitch tomorrow too um, at 7 p.m. Eastern, but and that'll be for my game making stuff. So, peace. <laughs>